So without further ado, I'm going to call up Terry Hedden, and he is going to take us through upsell cross-selling. All right. Obviously, drinking through a fire hose here. I hope you guys can appreciate why. We're trying to add as much value as we can, make as big a difference as we possibly can. And, and one of those things right now is to, to basically add more profit to the bottom line. A lot of us are working really hard. There was some conversation about not dropping money to the bottom line. And what we're seeing is this, a common theme of, of, of basically people leaving a lot of money on the table. They've already got the customer, they got the trusted virus status, they got the relationship, and frankly, they've got the concern in a number of different areas, but they're leaving a lot of money on the table. And you know, one of the things that I learned growing my MSP, I was really good at bringing on managed services of customers, but I, I ended up um, creating, um, unintentionally creating a situation where some of my favorite customers stopped really liking me or liking my company uh, after about five or six years aboard. And I couldn't figure out why because we loved them and they loved us. And I learned a little thing called life cycle management. So we'll talk about that today, how you can uh, basically create a revenue and profit generation system when it comes to profitable project revenue um, as part of your uh, company and, and hopefully uh, drop a lot of bottom line. I think through this conversation, I believe we could probably add 20 to $30 per user per month of net profit to your business in the next 30 minutes. So that's pretty good use of our time, right? So take the amount of customers you have under management, add, multiply it by $30, and that's your monthly profit increase as a goal of today. All right, so <clears throat> first of all, you know, for people like me who don't really enjoy the technology as much as what the technology does to the business and what does for the business, it's easy to lose sight of um, the real reason we're here, which is to keep our clients happy, happy with us, happy with technology, leveraging technology, and then more secure. And you know, upselling and cross-selling your customers is a way to do that. If you think about it, I had the customer that I got really unhappy with me is called the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. It's part of the military's uh, Veterans Day and uh, the Marines' birthday today, in fact. Uh, it's a, kind of a meaningful charity to me. They give a college education to children of fallen Special Ops soldiers. That is noble of a cause as you can get in my mind. And, and it took me a while to figure out what was happening. They, they basically had this steady decline in satisfaction. And what I realized is that people with six-year-old computers are not as happy as people with new computers. So I invented a thing called life cycle management. But now I think it's even more important to keep up, you know, and especially when I look at the security side. A lot of MSPs have, have we're cutting edge and bundled it in and they had great antivirus 10, 15 years ago, but they kind of kept that plan going and people are not really going back to their existing customers and making sure that their security stack is appropriate. And I think it's, it's creating huge risks for MSPs and for our customers. And then another benefit of that is when you kind of have a good process by which you keep equipment new and you keep them on the newer technology, they tend to have fewer problems with reduces your service costs. So when you increase revenue and reduce service costs, you have a huge impact on profitability. So selling to new customers is a lot easier to existing customers. We know that. Um, but more importantly, with MSPs, we have a very unique business relationship with our clients. We are the decision maker. We have a conversation about money from time to time. But at the end of the day, they're going to ask us what we think. So we have a huge responsibility and opportunity to parlay that into reducing service costs, reducing customer risk, and increasing our profitability. So I believe the, the statistic of 60 to 70% likeliness is probably an understatement. If you brought all of your customers a $30 technology stack and put your reputation on the line and say, we need this here, or you face potential devastating consequences of some sort of ransomware attack, I believe that, op that opportunity is probably closer to 90% probability. We just have to get a program and go after it, go after those customers, hopefully by the end of the year. Regular cadence with your customers is incredibly important. I think in the age of managed services, we all got sort of addicted to never visiting the customer site and that we were most successful when they never heard from us. The problem is that's not human nature. They, we want community, we want relationships. People value the, the face time you get with them. Whether it's virtual or on site, I think most people would agree on site means more. Uh, handshakes and and eye-to-eye and -eye contact is just difficult to do online. So I think one thing we need to do is consistently stay in front of our customers. And the people that I like in front of a customer is what we call 
a, a virtual CIO or a VCIO, the account manager in the sales process. We like people getting together and doing what we call an IT update. Now, in my opinion, a smaller customer or a lower plan customer might get this quarterly, or a larger or higher plan customer might get this monthly, but we're gonna go through and talk about their current infrastructure, you know, so they can realize that a four-year-old laptop needs to be replaced, a three-year-old laptop. We'll talk about that in a second. You're also gonna go over what they bought from you, uh, opportunity to make an upsell. Talk about the reports from managed services. I'm a huge believer in Brightgage, but there are also other uh, reporting engines that are great. And then lifecycle management. That's the process by which you regularly, proactively replace equipment to keep things performing at its best. So when it comes to your infrastructure, what we like to see is every component of the infrastructure covered. We want them to see you as the trusted advisor for all things tech. Then and only then are you in control of your own customer. Because today's copy or printer dealer is tomorrow's MSP. So you have to be in control of the copy print management decision. You want that to flow back through you. The way you do that is to start tracking contract expiration dates for that equipment and then controlling and offering help to bring in and get three vendors involved, which you magically will do hopefully with people you have no non, a non-compete with, some sort of business relationship where you get a kickback, but also they're not gonna take that managed services business. So what I like to do is to come in on a, on a regular basis, sort of monthly or quarterly, and just sort of recap where things are. You know, where things are across the entire business, the infrastructure. We like to go over the contract details, talk about outstanding invoices, uh, what plans people are on. Um, what, what I've learned is that the more often you talk about the plans that they're on versus what they should be on, the more likely they are to upgrade to the plan they should be on. Uh, and one thing about Marketopia is we don't recommend one plan. We like to get people, we, we want to win, so we, we want to close the managed services deal, whatever plan we can get them on, but clearly explain what they get and what they don't get with the plan they selected, but have a very regular process by which we get them on the right plan. So they might come in on an essential plan, and your goal over the first year is to get them to move to a, an advanced plan, for example, which might include business hour support. We love reporting, um, showing value, showing uptime. This, is, this part of the industry has come a long way. Brightgage is pretty fantastic when it comes to talking in a visual way how you're delivering on the value of managed services. Um, I definitely recommend going over those. And those are all what I would call necessary evils to get to the real reason you're there. An account manager, a virtual CIO, has one job, keep the customer happy, and they're gonna do that through cross-sell and upsell. No one's gonna be happy with a 10-year-old computer. I don't care how good you are at service. So you should have the job description of every account manager should be at least 51% sales. A lot of people misunderstand the virtual CIO role and turn it into a service role, when in reality it must be, by definition, a sales role. For example, if you don't have a defined process that you regularly upsell your customers into the newer technologies for security, they're at risk and so are you. If they're not getting end user training for ransomware, you're not offering that as a service, they're at risk and so are you. If they have a, a, a router, a switch, or a firewall that's end of life that's no longer in security updates, they're at risk and so are you. This has to be a big part of it. In fact, it's so important that I say that the um, quota for a account manager, virtual CIO, is the monthly recurring of the customer every month. So if they're a $3,000 a month account, their goal is to get $3,000 in add-on sales every month on average. So if they're quarterly, that'd be $9,000. So you have a quota attached to this. This also helps you pay for it. By proactively report, uh, uh, recommending equipment replacement, you're going to keep your service costs down and customers sat up. So what you want to do is to get into a process where you're proactively planning for replacement of equipment. You're helping that with budgeting. You're helping buy in bulk so they can bring the cost out. If you know they need to replace 10 laptops in the next six months, you might do them all at the same time to cut down on the costs and or increase your profit. One times the recurring, monthly. So if they're a $3,000 a month managed service account, your virtual CIO should have a $3,000 a month quota. 
It's harder to think of it as one customer at a time, especially if they're, you're meeting with them once a quarter. So if they're managing a book of business, let's say, you know, 100,000 a month in managed services, their goal is $100,000 a month in add-on revenue. That's hardware, software, additional services, that type of thing. And what? Yeah. If, if your managed service is a million a month, which of course it probably is multiple of that for you because you have such a great accent, that additional million in additional hardware, software projects, and additional managed services is your goal. So it's double the managed services revenue. So if you look at revenue, you're like, I'm making a million a month in, in recurring, I want a million a month in everything else. That's another way of thinking about it. Um, and, and I've learned it's, it's, it's a goal that a lot of people keep. And frankly, I think it's a way to make a lot more money from your existing customers because the, the salesperson is always looking for the next thing. Instead of letting it go by because they're not really interested in printers, they might sell that printer with a maintenance contract. You know, they might get the revenue they wouldn't normally get. So questions on that, I guess, before I continue. Okay. So there's a process by which you plan, procure, deploy, usage, and what we're talking about right now are these two. These three, really. You have a regular cycle of upgrade. We replace laptops. You get them to agree on a refresh cycle, three, two years, three years, four years. It might depend on the industry they're in or the type of resource. Maybe a software developer might get a new computer every two years where you know, maybe someone in printing and shipping might, might get it every four years. But you get them on that regular cadence of proactivity. If you think about it, right now in managed services, we try to get all of our customers to put in five-year contracts. So right now you're talking about 2027 revenue. If you do this right, you're now doubling 2027 revenue. You're getting them on a plan where they're spending that money in a plan basis. It helps if they're on hardware as a service, but you don't have to. Any other questions on this? It's a great way to turn the, the, the virtual CIO into a profit center. For a lot of us, it's a, it's a cost center. This turns it into a profit center. Again, you're increased revenue and margins, and you're also decreasing service expense. So it ends up becoming a very powerful position. Um, and, and the natural temptation for these people is to become customer service representatives, service escalation points, stuff like that. This is a way of ending that by giving them a quota. We also like proactive disposition plans. Instead of throwing things away, you can recycle them. Um, I think it's good for the environment, good for the world. Any other thoughts or questions on this? All right. I, I think a lot of us really have a responsibility right now. I know a lot of MSPs are sort of hiding behind their old managed service agreement saying, I'm afraid to bring up the new security issues, the new security concerns, and frankly, I'm afraid to make money. Because if you bring up a, a, like a Sentinel-1 with a SOC, I think that is your responsibility to all of your customers to do. And any fear you have of bringing that up to the customer is based on your own insecurity about what you know about security. For anyone who's just relying on WebRoot and just letting it roll, they're playing Russian Roulette with not just their business, but all of their customers' businesses. We have a responsibility to do something greater, but the beautiful thing is, in this example, you have a 5,000 node under management. At $20 profit per node, you're adding 100 grand to your profit. We have customers, some of these luminaries that will come up here in a minute, will literally talk to you about the security offering, the security stack that they're selling. They're buying it for $6, $9, and selling it for $25 and $30. So you start adding $20 per node to the bottom line, and you really materially impact EBITDA. So not only is it right to do ethically and morally, but it's right to do economically as well. Thoughts or questions on this? I think it's the greatest opportunity that this space has had, this industry has had in 15 years. I think managed services was the last good one. Everything else has been like incremental stuff. You know, I don't know, Office 365 was more of a blessing to the engineer than it was the sales team. But this is a blessing to everybody. This is an incredible opportunity. Fundamentally, the security landscape has changed. We have an ethical and moral responsibility to protect our customers. Oh, and by the way, it just happens to be a very profitable thing to sell because it's ultimately fear. And the beautiful thing is the media are doing the sales for you. You just gotta bring the articles to the table and say, let me tell you about the story. It started off with the big companies like Home Depot and now it's mom and pop shops and, 
and everybody else. So this is something I want everyone to take out of here as a personal commitment, that they're gonna get a high security offering while they're here at IT Nation. Ink the freaking deal. Find a way to get a program going. Market Toby uses Sentinel-1 and CyberHawk, but there are a lot of great vendors out there. Sentinel-1 has a SOC themselves. Um, Continuum has great security products. There's a lot of options out there. Leave here with an option and then commit to yourself to getting in front of your customers here. Call it a Christmas present to yourself. I don't know about you, but making an extra 100,000 profit a month or 1.2 million profit a year would probably make 2022 a little better year than 2021. So this is something that you can do right now and I think you have an ethical and moral responsibility to do it. So to kind of recap this little section is you have to have a partnership with your clients. You are not a sell and walk away vendor. You have an ongoing relationship and a responsibility to maintain the security and stability of their network. And to do that, you have to have a defined process by which you cross sell and upsell all of your customers on a monthly basis or quarterly basis based on that time. Any questions for this presentation at all? All right, with that, we'll invite our luminaries. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah? You're asking if MSPs bring it in-house or partnering with other firms? You know, I am, I am a firm, so you're talking to a guy who had trouble saying no. That was one of my diseases as an MSP business owner. I did everything, man. I started off on cabling, on phone systems, I'll do anything. I was just gunslinging. And then one day I'm like, you know what, I kind of suck at some things. Like for instance, being good in telco, especially when the ages of partner, spirit, Merlin sort of phone systems, you had to have inventory. And I was not willing to have inventory of phone equipment. So I wasn't a very good phone company. So I had a project called Good to Great, where I looked at every line of business and exited them. I exited telco, other than uh, VoIP, and I exited cabling, for example. I did that all in like a 30-day project. Sold the businesses off. Um, I don't believe you have to do everything to be everything. I don't think you have to do anything you're not great at or committed to do what it takes to become great at. You can, SOC is a perfect example. Very few of us, if any of us, should have a SOC. The reality is it's really expensive to do it right. To have redundancy and the skill set required to do it right, you're kind of, it's, it's silly. I didn't even have my NOC insourced. I outsourced my NOC. My help desk was always in-house. My on-site support was always in-house. But I, I outsourced my NOC. So my point with that is that if you don't want to do it yourself, that's perfectly OK. Come up with a business relationship where you can bring people in that you trust. Preferably get a 10 to 15% kickback on revenue. Since their cost of sale drops, they can give that commission to you. But more importantly, be the answer for your customer. Your customer doesn't want to call three copier equipment dealers. They want to come to you and say, what are the three that I should get bids from? And you're like, you know what? I'll take care of it. I'll, I'll take care of the whole thing. I'll bring you my, I'll give you three bids. I'll bring you my recommendation and justification and make the decision easier for you. That's what your customers want from you. No one wants to go through the pain in the rear end process of due diligence and research. They'd rather have you pre-vet these vendors and bring them the answer. So do that. Look at the entire solution stack, including websites, print and copy, everything, and come up with three firms that you want to recommend to your partners and then proactively bring that. Hey, I want to talk about copiers and printers. When's your lease over? Let's track that in my PSA tool. Let me proactively bring you three bids 90 days before your contract's over, and I'll make it easy on you. We'll do this together and I'll help protect you. Win, win, win. You don't have to be the, do all the work to be the answer, but I think you have to be the answer, especially now. I think it doesn't, looking forward 15, 20 years, I don't think it's hard to see the industries changing. It's not gonna be what it was 10 years ago in 10 years. But I believe that we provide an even more of a service in the future, we're more important. We just can't, define our scope to hardware and software and survive. We're gonna to have to be a solution provider, a true technology solution provider, including custom software development, line of business applications, print, copy, phone system, website, everything. We need to be the answer to our customers' technical problems, and if we do that, we'll make more money than we've ever made. Frankly, it's a lot more interesting for us to manage all those things instead of just one, and we'll make a whole lot more money. A lot, there's a lot more profit in the future. I think revenue might drop, but profit should go through the roof. I mean, look at Office 365. How much easier is that to manage than an exchange server? That was about the worst thing in the world. 